Hello, Aditya. Hello, Diraj. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm audible. Hello. Uh, yes, Diraj, you are. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I missed have... that. What did you say, Aditya? I'm really sorry. Just give me one. Uh, Dheeraj was asking whether he is audible or not, so I told him he was audible to me. Ah, great. Thank you. All right. Forgive me that I'm a little bit behind schedule right now. Uh, I need to get the agenda up on screen and then we'll talk through what, what we're going to discuss today. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, so SIG meeting is running now. Okay, got it. All right. Sorry, just a minute while I bring up the, the text. Really, truly, it's I shouldn't take this long to get into a text editor. It's not that hard. Okay, good, here we go. Hello, Alyssa. Good morning, Mark. Okay, so I am going to uh, start sharing my screen and we can talk agenda and be sure that we get all the topics identified. So you should see a copy of the agenda that is currently empty. Yes. All right, so we've got one topic which was communication improvements that I'd like to put somewhere on our agenda for today, particularly community, so, so discourse was discussed in the, in, the, in the governance board yesterday and I'm really quite impressed with what it's showing for us. Um, the other is we've got DevOps world is coming, right? And we've got a Contributor Summit at DevOps World or associated with DevOps World. And in this case, it will be during APAC time zone. So Alyssa and I will be in the middle of our night to, to attend that session. We look forward to it. Uh, then outreach program status seems like a good thing for us to talk to briefly. So we can talk to Google Summer of Code. Um, Alyssa, would you be willing to share current status on Jenkins is the way? Yes, I can. Super, thank you. Uh, then we've got, uh, and this one, we've got the CDF webinar uh, coming soon, coming next week. Uh, DevOps radio opportunity discuss, was discussed yesterday. Let's talk further about it, Alyssa, because I've got more questions there. And all right. And oh, oh, and this one, yes, press releases to speak to analysts. I got some guidance yesterday that we should talk further about that. So okay. uh, Jenkins press contact is what I'm going to call it. Now, Diraj, there were also topics we noted during our docs office hours that should be brought up here today. What were they? Can you help me remember them? Well, um, we had a discussion about how we can um, invite college students also to start contributing to Jenkins. So we wanted the, our target audience to be college students and how we can approach them. 
not approach invite them to be contributors right good okay so st inviting students to more actively contribute good and that's that's one that that Alyssa had had been thinking on as well and and so that's discussion topic great thank you okay um, all right that, very good i don't remember any other topic as of okay now. all right so Alyssa, maybe would it be okay if we had you take the act as voice on on the devops world is coming and we'll we'll have that one there and then outreach programs i can probably talk to i can certainly talk to google summer of code mm -hmm. um diraj would you be okay being the voice here on the university students and we'll we'll interact with you and talk back and forth and then Alyssa, you'll take jenkins is the way yes so Diraj, in this case, what, we're, what we'll do is have you act as, as our authentic student and, and therefore we'll use you as the test case. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks very much. All right, then anything else that needs to go on the agenda? I think it looks good. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna mute myself so that I can take notes without distracting, go ahead. All right, so, um, so DevOps World is slated to begin September 28th to the 30th. Um, we do have a lot of Jenkins sessions at the event. The event is virtual this year as well. Um, next year, it's most likely going to be in-person event. Um, so a lot of Jenkins topics. Um, we will also have an exhibit area um that we will probably need jenkins experts to help staff uh to answer jenkins q a questions um, um and then as mark mentioned uh we are also planning for a contributor summit um during the event as well and i we can go into that further now or later mark Oh, we can go, I guess we can go into that now. Um, so right now I'm still working this out with the events team um, to uh, set up the date and such and see what platform that we wanna use. Um, it's still in the works, but we are planning for a contributor summit during the DevOps world in September. Now, and, and do you think there's a reasonable chance that we could we will be allowed to do it during Asia Pacific, even though the conference itself is not during Asia Pacific time zone? Would that still be okay? I think it should be okay. So I think the backup plan, so if we can't, if, if, the, if the conference cannot host the event via their platform, then we'll just go to Zoom as our default, as our backup plan. And you know we have plenty of freedom to use it whenever we want. In, in that case, great. All right, thank you. Okay, so the complication there is we will need need a contributor summit agenda. Yeah. Uh, participants, promotion, etc. Ah, and then we will also have Jenkins workshops um, at the conference as well. So tell us more about the Jenkins workshops. What what sorts of things does that mean? So the workshop is going to be about three minutes, uh, no, sorry, 90 minutes uh, training workshop and that's virtual. Um, and this is gonna be on how to contribute to the Jenkins project. I'm also working on the possibility of having another um, workshop that's on Jenkins pipeline. So that's still in the works and yet to be confirmed. Great, excellent. And these so, workshops will be free. Super, so Diraj, you recognize this one? Contributing to Jenkins? 
Diraj was Absolutely. one of the co-presenters at our newcomer segment at the Contributor Summit, at the last Contributor Summit we had in June. Nice. Yes. Oh, and Aditya was, Aditya, weren't you also one of the other presenters? So, so three yeah. of the presenters at the last session are in this meeting. Yes. <laughs> Great, excellent, thank you. And then they were staying up very late in the middle of the night to help do that. Thank you very much. That's really nice. All right, anything else that you wanted to bring to us on DevOps? Oh, oh, actually, let me put the note here, right? Because I've got the action. DevOps world announcement for the Jenkins.io site. And I wonder, is this one, Diraj, I wonder if you wanted to, do you want to pair with me, pair with me on, on creating this pull request? Are you interested in doing, this is, this is kind of a documentation effort, but it's a different thing because it changes the Jenkins.io uh, top level site and makes, makes an entry, adds an entry into this, uh, oh dear, what do we call it? Help me on this, uh, there's a name. Time. The, the, yes, the jumbotron. This thing, we need to change this to to highlight. Okay, we're done with She Code Africa. Uh, we've finished CDCon, mm -hmm. and so we need to remove those two. And we've completed the contributor award. So, are you interested in in pairing with that? Maybe we do that at our next Docs office hours. Absolutely, I'm really happy to be part of it. Uh, so, Alyssa, I am proud to say that I now have a schedule for when I'll do that. <laughs> okay, that's that's great. Just thanks very much. So we need to, Alyssa, that means you and I need to be sure we get the images collected in time. The next office hours is late Monday evening. So okay. it will be next Monday after your end of your working day. All right, I will work on it today. Great. Uh, also... How do we promote for DevOps conference? Like uh, with the help of uh, mailing lists, of course, and uh, there has to be some uh, posts on LinkedIn. That's all I can think of. Is there anything else that you use? Good, good question. So other, so promotional things for DevOps world, we'll do the, the Jumbotron, mm -hmm. right? So we'll put it on the Jenkins Jumbo on www.jenkins.io, uh, LinkedIn posts. I think we've done those before, right, uh, Alyssa yeah. from the Jenkins? Yeah. LinkedIn post, um, Twitter, and a couple of blog posts. Good. And the blog posts usually that highlight interesting topics in the agenda right in the conference agenda so hey right. this this speaker or that speaker yeah we highlight the jenkins um sessions or workshops and contributor summit what's involved uh what does the agenda look like uh things like that right oh a good point yes certainly we will want a blog post that announces the next contributor summit as that comes available, as the as we get agreement and when, et cetera. Very good. All right, makes sense. Thanks. Great. Okay. Anything else on DevOps world? I think I'm good. Okay. All right. So I am I am really pleased with the results that we're seeing from community.jenkins.io. So if we, let's just go look at it briefly so that you can see the kinds of things that are happening on that site now. What this is, is discourse is a, a, a discussions forum, a way of doing, and they've, they've donated hosting of this for the Jenkins project. And so what we see here is um, new topics that are introduced and conversations that started that say, hey, do we need this? Do we need that? Lots of ideas and suggestions from people that come in or, hey, here's a question, somebody highlighting a capability. Hey, look, here's how I used Groovy inside my 
my Visual Studio code. Those sorts of things, and now it's got categories, so we can look at, hey, I'd like to see everything about contributing code. Oops, no topics there. Maybe I want to see about contributing to advocacy and outreach. Here's Alyssa asking for approval for the um, ebook number three. Great uses of, of this Jenkins discourse site, community.jenkins.io. Mark, is that where people can go for support questions too? Or should they continue to use the mailing list? They can, and we're we're experimenting with it now. So, so for instance, it's the we envision that this could eventually completely replace the mailing lists. Mm. It's not we're not ready to announce. Oh yes, it's done, but we certainly can do question and answer kind of things here. Okay. So, so did did that? Did that help? I'm. Yes. Yeah. Because um, the reason I ask is I sometimes I get a question here and there on Jenkins uh, is the way dot io on uh -huh. support questions. So and I refer them to the mailing list. Yeah, and and I think I think it's a it is a very very good candidate. Uh, as a place to do conversations like that because mm -hmm. of the facilities it has to make communication better between people, right? It's got, it's got concepts that, that just don't exist in the mailing list. Hey, I can, I can give a thumbs up. I can, I can tag something. I can remove tags. And, and those sorts of things allow the information stored here to be much richer and much more useful. Okay. Yeah, so I, I continue to be amazed at the things we get out of the showing off category has been a lot of fun. It's been unexpectedly useful to see, oh yeah, people just highlighting, here's how I use Jenkins. So if we look at showing off, um, Oleg posted a link to our a presentation he and I did at CDCon. Mm -hmm. Or you'll find all of the, all of the contributor summit videos are are linked in are available as link here so if we look at here are the full sessions with all the videos and easy to get to posting this was really trivial for me i love the um the search feature yes yes exactly all right any any questions there in terms of how we're doing with this course and what we're doing there. So is this going to be a replacement or an alternative to Gitter channels? Yes, it, it actually is a potential alternative to Gitter channels. So it's less, uh, for me at least the experience thus far has been less about chat and more about longer, longer lived conversations. So, so a question, how would I do this is really well suited to discourse. And th those frequently happen in, in Gitter chat right now. Other things like a quick conversation about a pull request or about a particular issue, or I'm not sure that's a great fit for, as good a fit for discourse as just stay in Gitter. For instance, Google Summer of Code discussions related to the Git credentials binding project that we're that I'm working um, that probably isn't a great fit for community.jenkins.io. Whereas, whereas, how do I use Git more effectively? Probably is. Right. Did did that answer your question, Diraj? Yes, totally. All right. So. Next topic: outreach program status. Um, actually, let's let's mix this up. Alyssa, would you be willing to go first and share with us on the uh, Jenkins ebook? Sure. Um, so we have just completed ebook number three. Um, so based on the 
the Jenkins is the way stories that we've collected, we've gathered. Um, this this uh, um, this file here is about uh, stories from the Fortune 500 companies like Apple, IBM, and such. Um, you know how they're using Jenkins, what challenges they faced, and the values that they got out of it. Um, we are. Uh, uh, I still need to do a final approval with the people who submitted these stories before we publish the story. So I'm shooting for next week to get this story published or this file uh, or this ebook published. Um, and then, but please have a read. And um, I think there's, there's lots of good stories in here that people can be inspired from. I mean, there's, there's just, uh, just, big companies that are using Jenkins and they're they're loving it. Um, and we are also continuing to write and receive and write Jenkins is the uh, Jenkins is the way user stories and um, case studies. So if there's if you know anybody that is interested in submitting a story, please um, go to jenkinsistheway.io and um, fill out a quick form, probably 15 minute survey, and then we'll get your story written up and then we'll send you a free t-shirt. Excellent, That's thank you, Alyssa. Yeah. At Diraj, your, your new employer, I suspect will want you to do something with Jenkins and you may have a story to tell in five or six months. We hope, we hope for the best. I will make sure that happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Great, thank you. So next topic from me was Google or Google Summer of Code. So there are five projects in five GSOC projects in Jenkins. Uh, one of those actually is represented by Aditya. Uh, thanks Aditya for your work on, on the conventional commits plugin project. That's great. So they'll be presenting next week, July 20th. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. The pleasure is and, all mine. Excellent. And I assume that your presentation is getting closer to ready and that you're you're going to going to tell us a good story on, on the 20th. About the good story part, I hope so. And presentation, yeah, it'll be ready by tonight. Tomorrow we'll do a review. I'll do a review with Gareth and probably it will be finalized and sent to Kara. Great. All right. So we'll need to promote the event. Um, so the usual, uh, let's see, meetup, LinkedIn post, what else? A Twitter, tweet. Twitter, right. And I think we, and I've got the action item to do a blog post. So, and I'll get that done here shortly. Any, any questions there or concerns around Google Summer of Code? Yes. So I remember in on YouTube, you posted a video about all the G, previous GSOC interns who were uh, sharing their experience about how it all went and what they learned and uh, what is there for the new interns. So they shared their experiences, right? So I just want to say that it was a really, really great idea. And I, as an aspirant, was very happy to see and learn about previous interns experience with GSOC. So it, it definitely convinced me to be part of uh, GSOC with Jenkins. Good, good insight. So, and those experience report videos actually came after the conclusion of all the projects, right? So, so that's don't miss, don't miss the outreach opportunity after the project's complete, because you're, you've got a very good point. Those experience report videos help people understand, oh, hey, it was like this, or, I, or this is how I interacted, and this is why it worked that way. Good. Okay, very good.
All right, next topic then, Diraj, on inviting students to contribute. And, and so maybe let's start, Diraj, with give us, share with us some of your background, what, what your experience has been so far, et cetera. And, and that way then Alyssa and I and others may be able to ask you some questions and get some insights. Sure, so I, I would definitely need your help uh, by asking me a question that would be really great. So, so being a student from college, I got to know about Jenkins with the help of uh, only and only GSOC. I had no idea about GSOC. Uh, so, because uh, if you talk about JavaScript, Java, these are part of our curriculum. So we get to know about them very easily. But Jenkins is something that we as a student think that it's going to be used by us years ahead. Like when we are into our job and maybe that time we'll be using it. So it's a state that's that's the state of mind that we have. I don't want to speak for everyone. So, uh, so that was effective and uh, coming to the part where I have been associated with Jenkins and how I think about Jenkins right now. So I would say that even though I don't have, of course, I don't know about Jenkins uh, very in, in so much detail, even then I can help uh, contribute to Jenkins as I did uh, using different, different tech stacks. And that was, that was made possible because uh, uh, when I was uh, in, uh, because I got to know that there's uh, so many, so many other tech, tech stacks as well. So, so that was a good thing that, uh, because I had this idea in my mind that I need to know Jenkins really well, how it works and code base in order to contribute to, to it. So this is something that I want to clarify that uh, you can contribute uh, in lots of other spaces as well. And uh, commenting about uh, Jenkins uh, code base specifically, it is a little bit um, difficult to understand for people who are starting up uh, even with Java. So um, yeah, so if we can, so I think we can work more on that maybe like to help newbies to understand the Jenkins Java code base specifically. That would be really great. And uh, yeah, so please ask me questions then that way we can take this conversation forward. Okay, so so Diraj, as you you came to Jenkins, you said first through GSOC. So the, the Google Summer of Code promotion process got you into Google into Jenkins. It could have brought you to any one of several other projects but you chose Jenkins, were we just lucky that you chose Jenkins? Or was it, there was a size thing? What was, because there are many projects in GSOC, right? So why, why Jenkins as opposed to some other Google Summer of Code project? Is there something that, that makes Jenkins interesting to you or that we should do better to make it more interesting to other GSOC students? That's that's a really great question. So uh, out of all the organization, I chose Jenkins because I already knew someone who was part of uh, Jenkins, uh, sorry, a GSOC internship with Jenkins. So that was Sladen. So Sladen is my senior in college. So I got to know about him and I approached him and he told me about this. So he suggested me some projects and uh, I that's how I dived right into Jenkins. Okay, good. So, so now I'm going to ask a different question. This one to Alyssa. Alyssa, could you envision a refer a friend program? What, yeah. what, I mean, that's, that's sort of a sneaky approach, right? But, but what if we had a refer a friend program where we said, okay, if you refer five, five developers, we'll send you a sticker. Or if you refer 25 developers and they, they, they join and submit this, we'll send you a t-shirt. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but a, a refer a friend program might, might capitalize on, on, the, on, what, on what Diraj just described. Absolutely, I, I love that idea. And we can definitely do more than stickers um, because I think this is a, an important space where we you know, 
as we try to get more people um, involved in Jenkins. Um, and I also would love to get like, you know, um, the perspective of each student, like after after the 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 um, the program, right? So if you've gone through this process, how did what did you like about it? What did you learn? And my the goal there, um, my thinking is that that would help inspire other students. You know that we have this content documented on Jenkins.io. Um, that it could help inspire somebody down the road in case that somebody doesn't know you, right? So um, if they read your article or your post and that might inspire them. Good. But yes, I do like that. I, I like the idea before a, pro, a friend. Okay, now, so, now Dira, oh, go ahead, Dira, sorry. I'm sorry, I was just saying that this is a really, really great idea of referring a friend. So, so now you mentioned that you didn't, I think you said you didn't generally have experience with Jenkins during courses. In your coursework at, at college, at the university, do you, do you get experience with other applications? Like, do they put you into GitHub or do they have you spend time in Bitbucket or Giddy or, or other applications like that or not so much? Um not as a part of curriculum like if you talk about github so we are not taught about github as a part of a curriculum but if we join some societies in our college any kind of uh, clubs that we join then um, or or if we join hackathon so hackathon makes it mandatory for us to submit it via github so that's another way how we Okay. All right. So you, you just said something crucial. So clubs you said and hackathons. Yes. Got it. Okay. So, so just, so the curriculum it's, and, and that matches, I think with what I've understood elsewhere, many times the instructors are trying to teach first principles, teach fundamental things like algorithms or Hey, here's here's this concept of functional programming, or this concept of of um, block structured programming. Whereas you noted, you join a club, and that club may may have a theme, and that theme may motivate you to use a particular application. Now, can you give some examples of clubs in your at your school that might? might be examples there. I wonder if we should reach out to clubs or to, to hackathons. That's something we can do. So to tell you about the clubs, uh, I was part of IEEE club. So I, I, I assume that you must be knowing it. Yes, great. So uh, other than that, we have CSI club as well, Computer Society of India. And uh, a few more clubs like this. So the aim here is that uh, the clubs work in a way to engage uh, uh, other college students and to conduct together some fun events as well as some hackathons as well as some workshops. So if I give example of a workshop, we had a cloud computing workshop, we had a workshop on blockchain, we had a workshop on uh, Android development, like a simple app. So because the need for these workshops is that in our curriculum, it is not covered. So we need to go to somewhere else to get to know about these. And specifically, we go to these uh, uh, clubs and we join these clubs because these are run by our seniors. So those are those kind of seniors who have went ahead with this uh, curriculum and tried out new things. So they want to share it with uh, the people, the beginners or the juniors. So that's why we trust them to uh, teach us something new. So that's how I uh, got to know about uh, Android and uh, GitHub as well. And uh, I, I even won a hackathon at our campus. So that's how I involved in hackathons as well. And yes, about uh, Jenkins, how Jenkins can uh, come into this picture. So uh, our hackathon was sponsored by GitHub. So that's how Jenkins can also uh, involve themselves here by sponsoring hackathons at college levels. So that would be great. Good, okay, so. These are great insights. All right, so, and 
And now, when when you say GitHub sponsored the hackathon, did they have local employees who were assisting with it? Did it, was it just that they funded it? Tell me what sponsorship meant for a hackathon. Right, that's a great question. So if we talk about a hackathon which is sponsored by GitHub, it means that uh, they are going to be giving away their uh, specific goodies, first of all, to the winners. And uh, it is uh, being run by the connection between GitHub and the hackathon is by a campus expert. So GitHub has a concept of campus ex experts. So they have some set of students in a college who represents GitHub in their college. So they do that with the help of conducting some, uh, you know, same thing, events and hackathons and workshops to tell people about, hey, this is how important GitHub is and how it works and how it's going to be useful for you. So they're like the voice of GitHub in our college. So this is run by conducting some interviews and everything. So same thing is for Microsoft and other companies as well. So that's the that thing, that's the thing I wanted to. Uh, and and now, are it. these campus experts? Are they students, or are they actual GitHub employees? So they are uh, students for sure. Students. Okay. All right. So so, and any idea how how GitHub found those campus experts to persuade them to be a campus expert? Uh, well, uh, they have a website dedicated to it, and uh, I think. Uh, even Aditya is a DS, DSC lead from our college, since we are in the same college. So DSC lead, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, you said DSC lead? Yes, so I hope my voice is not breaking. A little bit. A little bit, I'm so sorry. Uh, but keep talking. Yes, sure. So uh, I was telling about a DSC lead, it means, uh, developers student club so what this club is about is uh, there are some set of students so aditya is the dsc lead from our college so what he does is he represents the technology of google at our college by partnering with our uh, already existing clubs and uh, you know taking workshops and uh, using the technologies in the events to tell people about it so that's about so do they actually teach you how to use the tool uh, in the sponsorship? In uh, so, so let me know if I uh, if I got your uh, question right. So, if we talk about GitHub experts, so yeah. so you're asking me whether um, they teach us uh, how GitHub works by conducting some demo and seminar, just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, they do that. They do that. They tell us about how Git push works, Git pull works, and they do some sample projects, and that's how we get to know about uh, GitHub. Okay. Okay, so it's that the, the campus experts commonly get some instructions from the, the company, and then the, those campus experts then show by demonstration and by example how to, to others, to other students. So they may show, they may schedule a, a meeting of the DSC and say, hey, we're going to do a DSC meeting and we're going to talk about GitHub pull requests and I'll show you how they work. Is, have I understood correctly, Diraj? Exactly. So if I'm not wrong, they have a schedule of events for, planned for the DSC leads that they need to do at college. So they have to fo they follow the schedule and conduct event and uh, the, the people from DSC, the higher authorities, they uh, uh, repeatedly check out their progress all throughout to know which college and is doing what, how many events that they've conducted and how the participation is there and so on and so forth. Excellent, okay, thank you. All right, so Alyssa, any other questions that, oh, go ahead, Diraj. Yes, so I was just, uh, so since you uh, asked me about the campus expert and DSC lead, so I was just wondering we, if we have a Jenkins campus expert, then they can uh, help the students by coming in in any, let's say, a hackathon, and they'll be using Jenkins as a form of CI CD tool, and uh, we'll be 
helping students to know about how it makes it easier uh, to use Jenkins. So that that would be helpful, I think. Right. So so that yeah that I think I, I mean we've certainly got Jenkins has um, all sorts of well there are many um, courses and slide decks to introduce Jenkins, right? And, and certainly we could share those with the campus experts. And, and that would be great. Um, so Google Summer of Code in Jenkins is certainly another thing that could happen next year, actively promoting it on campuses saying, hey, look, as part of the Google Summer of Code excitement here, do this. Good, all right. Exactly. And I've also posted a link on Zoom chat. So it's about GitHub campus experts. So you can know that they have a dedicated website. Ah, very good, okay. Great, thank you. Very good, yeah, thanks very much. Excellent idea, okay. Thanks. So that's about that. Yep. All right. So, Diraj, um, I can certainly help um, with any of this, you know, getting Jenkins into the schools and, you know, just uh, we can we can tag team this and 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 um, and help, you know, get work and connect you to the appropriate people to get Jenkins into the school. if if that's what you know you would like to pursue but i definitely would like for jenkins to get into the school for sure exactly that would be really really great i would love to be part of this great okay very good well diraj thanks very much for your being the voice of the, of student contributors that's really wonderful it is thank you so much i love it so anything else on inviting students to contribute? Um, no, nothing from my side. Okay, next topic was DevOps radio opportunity. Alyssa. Yeah, so DevOps radio opportunity. So CloudBees has a couple of DevOps radio opportunity that they are willing to give us some slots where we can talk about Jenkins so that to help promote Jenkins. Um, these are podcasts and it's gonna be via you know, Q&A sessions. Um, so it's just an opportunity for us to give some awareness to Jenkins and to hype about Jenkins. Great, and do you have any, are there any things that you'd say, ooh, I would suggest this topic or that topic, or things that you'd see are themes in the DevOps radio podcast that should, should we be addressing um, what's popular, what's hot right now in Jenkins? Should we be addressing, hey, what's, what's interesting? What's the latest thing that's happening? Or, or what sorts of things would you envision? So I envision that, so based on our previous DevOps World conferences. It seems like the sessions that performed really well are the ones that are um, you know, informing people what's the latest and greatest about Jenkins. There's so many Jenkins users and, you know, and they're still continuing to use Jenkins. So they want to know what is the latest and greatest. Um, tips and tricks are always great, but I'm not sure if, if the podcast would be you know, a, a good place for that. But I think just an overall talking about Jenkins, um, what's evolved, how to contribute even, and um, you know, just 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 check out Jenkins in general. It, I think it would it would be good. But um, you know, we it, we we would need to decide as a team on you know what is the topic we want to talk about. Um, come up with some Q&A, um, canned Q&As, and then we can go forward from there. And how long is a typical DevOps radio broadcast? Um, I believe it's an hour. I'm not sure, I have to check. 
great. Okay, so th that for me would be an important one because there are lots of lots of different stories. And since it's a podcast, it's entirely audio, so no slides to show, no no video recording, right? It's just audio. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Good. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. and this this I assume could be anybody from the community. It doesn't have to be an official voice of this or that. It's just people people who are interested in and have something to say. We could we could use their their story here. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Okay. All right. So we'll Mark and Alyssa continue that recruiting. And topics. Okay, good. Next was Jenkins press contact. And this one came up in the Jenkins governance board meeting yesterday. So Alyssa had sent a question to the Jenkins governance board looking for someone to represent Jenkins uh, in the in meetings with people from the press in meetings with people who are industry analysts or things like that. And um, we use the phrase uh, Jenkins spokesperson and got a correction that, oh, hey, there isn't really a person called the Jenkins spokesperson. Mm -hmm. But we do have Jenkins press contacts in the US and in China and in in the Russian Federation. So we've got official Jenkins press contacts. Right now, those two are listed as Tyler Croy and Kosuke Kawaguchi. And neither of them are actually actively involved at the moment in the Jenkins project. So what we need, what we need is we need someone who can be the official press contact. And I think what we'll do is bring it to the to the next Jenkins governance board meeting. Yeah. We discussed it yesterday in the Jenkins governance board and Gavin Mogan was willing to take the role, but we used the wrong term to define it. And so I think we need a little bit more discussion before, uh, before we're ready to say, oh, Gavin's a viable one. We may also want to hear voice from, from Oleg Nanashev or others on, okay, who else should be considered as possible press contacts when there's a need to answer questions from the press. Okay. So does that are there are there immediate needs that we have over the within the next 2 weeks where we need someone to talk to the someone or can it wait till the next governance meeting, Alyssa? Oh, it can wait, Mark. Oh, good. Okay, great. Then I'll get it on the on the next board meeting and we'll discuss it further. Thank you. All right. Any other topics for today? Great meeting. Good stuff. Thanks very much. Diraj, thanks and have a great night. Bye. So bye. Oh, yes. Bye bye. Diraj. So I wanted to share one more thing. Like uh, you were asking me about uh, what are the criteria for DSC lead? So if we are not, if you have some time, I can, or we can continue later. Oh, that would be great. So tell, tell us more about the DSC lead role. Sure, I would not take much of the time. So uh, if you talk about DSC lead, they, the criteria set by Google is that you need to have one year left for graduation and strong technical understanding of computer programming and software engineering. And yes, host an event ideally once a month and at least every three, month, three months. So. And if we talk about the process of application, so it's like similar to GitHub campus experts. So what they do is they uh, ask them to complete a registration form, then submit a video resume, and then uh, take some interviews as well. And uh, yeah, then they finalize the candidate to be the campus expert for a particular college or university. So that's how they do. So if you are planning to do that, so we need to have a particular curriculum uh, defined and uh, you need to you know uh, get in contact with some specific students at some uh, colleges and then 
find out the best one among them and uh, like take a review from for, from them once a month and just make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do so yes Uh, um, Diraj, that's that's a that sounds like a, a really amazing program. So the DSC program, this is sponsored by Google. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. Google. Ah, okay. Posted. And I've also posted the link on chat. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. So I'll. I'll... Excellent. Okay. Ah, okay. And they, this is an international program. Exactly. Wow. So we have GitHub uh, campus experts from USA University colleges as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. All right. Great. Good stuff. Um, Mark, do you, so um, I don't think I have Diraj's email address. Can I get that from you or can sure. I? Sure, I'll okay. send it to you, you bet. Okay, great. Um, so Diraj, I'll reach out to you and we can talk a little bit more about this because I would love to get Jenkins on here. Absolutely, I would really, really love that. I would love to help you. Oh, thank you. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Mark, for hosting. Anything else, Diraj? Anything else? Yeah. No, no, nothing. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll get the, the video posted once the recording is finished. Finished. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay.